going to call an audible. We're going to go. We're going to go with Elena. I'm sorry, Emma and Coach. Mike. Mike. <laughs> what the heck? It's mostly gone. <laughs> we will take that, but we'll give you the first comment, Coach. Wow. Um, the missing piece. Um, I'm just so happy for all these players and the organization who bought into what I was selling seven years ago. Um, that there was a path to get out of what was a pretty desperate time here. And if people would buy in, the path would get accelerated. And uh, this girl right here was one of the first pieces. Um, one of our draft picks that, um, you know, the maturity and growth that she's shown um, since she showed up as a 19-year-old. What the heck are you now, 26? Yeah. 26. And she's still a youngster. Um, how much her confidence has grown, what a great um, teammate she is. I think one of the best things about this team is, is the camaraderie and the family atmosphere in this team. They love each other. Uh, they played for each other. When we had our toughest moment uh, tonight uh, in the third quarter, um, we banded together, played like we had all year. Obviously, Emma and Elena and Christy and others, Tosh, that group that was on the floor, Ariel, the both Ariels. I mean, I didn't sub much in the second half. You know, LaToya and uh, I think Ariel Powers might have been the only other ones that played um, besides the group I just mentioned. And they, they, just, they just were warriors. Um, you know, we've talked about that uh, all year, that stay in the moment, be who you are. And they were. They, they stayed true to character. Uh, down the stretch, and I'm just, I'm, I'm so proud. I'm happy for our fans. You know, I don't know, whatever it is, 21, 22 years, I don't even remember. There's a lot of people that stuck with this group. And when we came here seven years ago on the heels of a 5-29 and 29 season, uh, this thing was on the brink. And uh, to see what's happened, this building, uh, everything else that's gone with it, I, I appreciate it so much. And, and everybody in this organization, the Wizards, the Caps, everybody has supported us. You know, you saw John and Brad there tonight. Um, they, they've been on board with us, and this is, this is a great feeling. This is what a family feels like. All right, everybody, we're going to begin. We have our other Washington players that we're going to bring in momentarily, but we're going to begin right now with Coach and Emma. First two questions will come front row center. Doug. Hey, Mike. Doug Feinberg, the AP. You actually had some time to sort of think in the last 30 seconds there because it didn't come down to a buzzer beater. I'm curious what was going through your mind as the clock is winding down. You knew Make the game free was over. Make your free throws. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, before that, that, last 30 seconds, yeah. uh, I turned and looked at uh, my staff, uh, Eric and Marianne and Maria and all those guys down there. and All the work that they've done behind the scenes, uh, I felt great at that moment because, you know, that's, you know, that's not what everybody sees. It's all the glamour part that everybody sees. But I, th I see... Natasha and Elaine and those guys in the gym in January with Eric or, you know, Maria or somebody working on stuff. Uh, I thought about all of the little things that have to go into putting the team together and how happy I was for that whole group. And I was looking at fans who I'd seen since the day I came here. I looked across, you know, away. There were people sitting in the front row who had been here since I came here. And to see the, the joy on their face, that's what this is all about. I mean, we're an entertainment business, but entertainment – and, and all that satisfaction was incredible. Next question, front row center. Uh, Howard Magdal, New York Times. I have a question for you. During that decisive period of time in the third quarter where you had an opportunity to consistently uh, drive the ball, score the ball, was this going to be something that you would have been in your skill set and something you would have done as recently as a year ago? Or is this part of what we talked about earlier this year of, of finding a different level for yourself. Um, I just really, really wanted to win this game. So I just came on the court and I knew that um, it was a moment that we needed some energy. And I was just going at the basket and was going in. So I just kept going. Um, coach has been ta talking about if your shot is going in or even not, you just have to take your opportunity. Um, and I don't think that I would have done this a year ago, two years ago, in the past. I think that's this 
these playoffs were the moment that I really realized that I have to take my responsibility and I can play, you know. Um, so that's just what I did, you know. Uh, but it's really not something that I would have done in the past few years. I'm not sure, yeah. She's one of the top players in the world. Mike, Emma, next question. Second row all the way to the left. Thanks. Emma, Mike, congratulations. Uh, from day one from Media Day, the motto of the team has been run it back. I, I'm curious what, now that you've achieved the goal that you all set out for, what that motto did to fuel each of you personally, if you could share something that you feel you improved on this year because of that motto, because of the team camaraderie behind it. Go ahead. When I first came back, um, from missing last year, um, I kind of knew in the back of my head that we were going to do it because I felt the difference in the past few years. It was that being hungry to take that last extra step. Um, so running back is like exactly what describes our team or our season this this year. Um, it just the team really changed by last year by the experience by going to the finals and not winning it. Um, so I think that model was a perfect model for us, just to motivate us to do that. Yeah. We have two more uh, questions from uh, Mike and Emma. No, no Sorry, I, I was going to answer. The, the only other thing about the run it back for me was um, the coach is a little different than the players in that regard. When you say run it back, you're already thinking to getting to this point. And I think a coach's job, and I think our players followed it along, is to stay in the moment, though. Uh, the worst thing you can do is think that, you know, because you got there, you, you deserve to get there again. I think this team was terrific in staying in the day-to-day -day process. There's a process to getting this done. It's individual work, it's team work, it's video work, it's scatter reports. And if you look too far ahead, you lose uh, sight of the little things you have to do to get better. And I think the one thing that this team can say is that we got better all year long. Um, and it's because they were able to not jump a month ahead or you know two months ahead is that you know we had a goal uh, to try to get home court advantage. It ended up being a difference. And that work that we put in to get the fifth game on our court paid off tonight because this crowd was great, our energy was great. And so, but, the, but you don't do that in the last two weeks of the season. You do that throughout. And I think they've been great at it. We have two more questions for Mike and Emma, and then we're going to bring up the other Washington players. Those of you who have questions, we will get to you on the second bunch. Second row center. Amber D. Dodd, HoopFee.com. Congratulations to you both. Um, Emma, of course, you hear missing piece, missing piece, missing piece all season, and um, especially in the series. Can you just talk about how that was motivation um, and how that just feel for you to just continuously dominate throughout this playoff series? Um. <laughs> I think it put pressure on her, to be honest with you. We, she was more nervous the other day than she was today, I think. Is oh, that, no, I was opposite. Yeah. <laughs> today I was so nervous. You were more nervous today? <laughs> Holy no. smokes, okay. <laughs> she uh, looked more calm today, so. Um, I've never really believed that because um, I know that last year I would not be the same player this year. Uh, I just think that I really need, needed that break and to be home. Um, so I would not have been able to bring what I brought now. Um, so I'm just glad that I got that confidence from the team, you know, that we, they had my back and they gave me the support. Without them, I would not be able to do what I did today, you know. Um, so it's, I've said that it was like my family and I really mean that. Emma, Emma Mike, standing to your right. Hey, Mike, Gene Wong, Washington Post. Those of us who were at Elena's introductory news conference remember her talking about championships right away. Did Sear make good on that with a herniated disc in most of the series? Did that maybe reveal something about her grit that you may not have known before she got here? Well, I, I always felt she had grit. It's just that sometimes you need the opportunity to display it. Um, you know, she was injured in the Chicago finals that year and, and a lot more injured, I think, than she was here. Um, I, I credit our medical staff uh, and, our, and our physical therapist for doing an unbelievable job uh, with all of our players, her, Ariel, uh, Christie's injury coming back. Uh, we've had a lot more bumps and bruises and injuries that we've kind of not hid from everybody, but we just don't talk about as a team. And, um, you know, I think they did their great job. But you you got to want to play through something. you got to love your teammates so much uh, that you play for the person in the room next to you. And, you know, they're not playing. No offense to anybody else, but 
they're playing first for each other. And I think that took precedence, and that's why their grit comes out, uh, because that meant, that meant that much to them. Mike, Emma, thank you. To our media, we have our other Washington players here.